Welcome back to the channel guys. Thanks for tuning back into another video. On this one, we are still working on the Honda CRX, but specifically the hot side exhaust components. What we're gonna be doing today is showing you how to ceramic coat it at home. Now there are actually a few kits online that you can order or a couple processes online that you can ship your manifold out. We're actually gonna be doing an out at home version using this VHT flame proof, uh, very high temperature paint. Now it says right here, header paint, ceramic coating, good up to 2000 degrees. You can do this at your house with very little effort, to be honest with you, it's really simple. Now there are some things that we wanna do before we actually get started to painting this. Stay tuned and we'll show you exactly how to do it. Okay, so if you aren't familiar with the build, this is our actually our all-wheel drive Honda CRX. We're currently in the process of switching out uh, the crack sleeve B20, the components from that to a fresh sleeve B20. And um, we have everything apart, obviously. So we're gonna take advantage of this downtime and actually uh, coat the manifold as well as the hot side of the turbo. Uh, basically, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing this to, it's basically the same procedure. Uh, since we're doing it just to this, just those two components, we're gonna go ahead and unbolt the downpipe as well as the center cartridge of the turbo from the back housing. Really simple, it's just got a couple bolts on each side. And once that's off, I'll show you exactly how we like to clean it before we get to coating. All right guys, so we are in the back right now. I have from uh, Harbor Freight this little central uh, pneumatic abrasive spot. Blaster gun is the full title and then a little water separator. I think this is supposed to go on the compressor side, but we have this laying around just like this set up already, so we're just gonna go ahead and use it. Uh, basically, this is a sand blaster for soda, so which is baking soda. It's uh, less abrasive, but it does the job done. Let's see. Not sure if the camera will pick it up, but what we're doing, we're getting all the rust off, because obviously we can't have paint get to the rust because we need a clean surface for when we're coating it. That should be more than enough for the camera to pick up right there. You can see that it's just blasting away the rust. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my mask and get to work. I'm probably gonna get some goggles real quick as well. And uh, just try to clean this up as much as I can, especially on the turbo side, because this gets a lot of heat, a lot of moisture, and it's iron, so it uh, really locks it in. It rusts really easy, opposed to like the manifold, for example. Now the instructions on the actual uh, paint says to scuff it with about 320 grit. We don't have any 320 grit, unfortunately 180 was the closest thing that we had to it. But we're still gonna give it a nice scuff. You can see on the surface where it actually changes color once you scuff it. So we're gonna do that until it's as consistent as possible all around. That way we have some nice gritty area for the uh, paint to actually start to adhere once we shoot it. Next step, we have basically wax and grease remover with a little micro, uh, micro cloth fiber towel. You wanna have a cleaner towel than what this is, but it'll do. Basically wanna clean it up as best as we can, get any grease that may be on there off, any particles that may have stayed from sanding, whatever it is, get it nice and ready for paint. All right, so we have it all wiped down. I actually also heated it up with a little bit of a torch so we can get it nice and warm. If there's any condensation, it would have evaporated already. Uh, we're gonna start shaking up the primer can and uh, give it its first coat of primer. Now this is the same VHT company that makes the primer and the paint, and they're uh, designed to work together. Two light coats followed by one medium wet coat, 10 minutes between each coat and 30 minutes before wet sanding or applying the VHT flame proof color. Dries to touch in 30 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna do two light coats 10 minutes apart, then a medium coat 10 minutes after that. And after about 30 minutes, we'll do the actual paint. All right. Lightly dusting it. All right, we're going on to light coat number two. Starting up the medium coat right now. And what really is different when I do a medium coat from a light coat, for the medium one, I like to keep a little bit of a slower uh, spray pattern as well as a little bit closer and uh, try to get uh, more caked on there.
All right, so it's been about 30 minutes since the last uh, coat of primer. So uh, now I'm shaking up the can of the actual paint. And what it's calling for is two light coats followed by one medium coat, same process as we did before. And then uh, once that's on there, we can actually start the baking process. Got the third coat on there that being the medium to heavy coat and uh, it's gonna dry up a little bit right now I'm gonna leave it about 10 minutes right there to dry it's not a gloss black although you can buy a clear coat for it and have it a little bit shinier this is just like a flat black which I really like because it matches the wrinkle black on the car so for the ceramic coat you need to have it baked after you get the last coat on there so it can have its full cure effect believe it or not we do it in a barbecue so the first step is 250 degrees for 30 minutes then cool down for 30 minutes then 400 degrees for 30 minutes, and then cool down for 30 minutes. And the final step is 600 degrees for 30 minutes, and then cool down for 30 minutes. We've got it sitting in there, about to go in for the first heat cycle. Let it warm up, and then, uh, you know, let the time do its thing. It's been 30 minutes, and it is crucial that for this cool down, you don't touch it, because any little bit of grease that goes on it right now is gonna get uh, burnt into it, and you're gonna leave a fingerprint and whatnot there. So uh, it's looking really good. I really like the matte finish to it. Nice and black and consistent and uh, it's gonna do its job right there. Yeah, I'm gonna let it cool down for 30 minutes and then we'll give it another nice little bake in there. Okay, that is the end of the second heat cycle. Still looks like the same flat black. Uh, nothing really changed the way it looks from between heat cycles or anything, but she's ready to cool down for 30 minutes and then the last final heat cycle right after. All right, she's on the cool down period right now and it's looking pretty good. I'll make sure to do an update video in a couple months to show you guys if it's held up and whatnot. But from what I've had uh, experience with this in the past, it's always been nothing but success when baking it in the uh, grill or barbecue, just like we did. Other people spray paint it and then just throw it on the car. And sure, it has a couple uh, has a couple options on how you can bake it on the car while it's running, but it never comes out as good as this. Back in the garage, fully baked and cured. And man, let me tell you, this thing is looking beautiful. And uh, if you are familiar with the car itself, the wrinkle black that I was saying that it would match with was uh, the charge piping that we have right here, as well as the uh, intake manifold, which is right there, and the valve cover, which all has like that uh, matte wrinkle black finish. So I think it's gonna match very well with it. It's gonna look a lot better than what it used to. It had that ugly bronze color like that before and uh, now it just really ties in the whole car a lot better. So if you aren't already subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe and notification bell. Leave us a comment if this helped you out and always uh, hit the like button because we really do appreciate that. We'll see you on the next one guys and hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a great day.